Assalamualaikum everyone. Now we continue chapter 3 about chemical bonding and water part 2. So in part 2 we will finish two topics about properties of water and aqueous solution. So in topic properties of water we have two subtopics. So you will learn the first subtopic about structure of water molecule and the second subtopic is the properties of water. As you all know, water covers about 70% of our earth surfaces. So in nature, water exists in three states. You all knew this one. Of course, water has water can be exist in liquid state, solid state, and gaseous state. At room temperature, it is nearly colorless. So this is the property of water. So water can be colorless, tasteless, and odorless liquid. Water is the only common substance found naturally in all three common states and of course water usually makes up 55% to 78% of our body. Okay, so please highlight this part because this is one of the important part which is structure of water molecules. So basically water consists of partially positive and from hydrogen atom and partially negative end from oxygen atom. So now look at the picture on the right side. One molecule of water consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, which is H2O. Okay, so there are strong polar covalent bonds between oxygen and its hydrogen. Okay. So you have learned about covalent bond, which is one of the intramolecular force. So covalent bond here holds the atoms or ions in one molecule, which means this hydrogen atom and oxygen atom are bonded together because of covalent bond. All right, next, water tend to form hydrogen bonds with the other water molecules. So you have learned this one, hydrogen bond is one of the intermolecular force which holds two molecules together. Okay, so look at this one, one molecules of water hold or attracted to another molecule of water by hydrogen bond. So please remember when you want to draw hydrogen bond, you have to use the dotted line. Okay, but for covalent bond, you have to use the straight line because it referred to as the strong polar covalent bonds. Okay, now we move to hydrophilic molecules. Okay, so please remember, hydrophilic means water-loving. So hydrophilic is any substances that can dissolve in water or any substances that can attract it to water. Okay, so they are composed of ions or polar molecules, which means they must consist of positive and negative charge. Okay, for example, ionic compound as sodium chloride, NaCl, which is commonly known as salt. Okay, so when you dissolve salt in water, of course, that salt can dissolve easily in water because of the molecules attracted to the positive charge, which is from sodium charge, sodium ion charge, and chloride ion charge. Okay, so look at this picture. That sodium ion, which is positive charge, attracted to the oxygen atom, which has the negative charge. So positive must attract it to the negative charge. Same goes to chloride ion. Chloride has negative charge attracted to positive charge from hydrogen atom. Okay, so positive must attract it to negative. So this is the hydrophilic molecules. Okay, next, what is hydrophobic molecule? 
So please remember, hydrophobic means water fearing. Okay, so hydrophobic is any molecule or any substance that is not soluble in water or that is not attracted by water. Okay, so hydrophobic for me, it's like hydrophobia. So phobia means fear. So this hydrophobic refer to the uh, any molecules that phobia to water or fear to water. So usually these hydrophobic molecules are non-polar, which means no positive and negative charge. Okay, for example, lipid soluble molecules such as vitamin A, D, E and vitamin K. Okay, so you may stop or pause this slide and you can uh, refer to my video, okay, about the water molecule. Okay, next we look at the five properties of water. So make sure you know water has cohesive and adhesive property. Water has high specific heat capacity. Water has high heat of vaporization. Water expands as it frees and water is a versatile solvent. Now we look at them one by one. Okay, we look at the first water property. The first water property is when water has cohesion and adhesion property. Okay, so what is cohesion? Cohesion is when the same molecules stick together. For example, one molecule of water stick to another molecule of water. Next, adhesion. Adhesion is when different molecules stick together. For example, one water molecule stick to other substance. Or when addition will occur between water molecules stick to the wall of container. Okay, can you imagine how is the water can be transferred from root to the shoot of one tree? So, of course, plants can bring water from shoots, sorry, from their roots to their leaves or shoots by this cohesion and adhesion. Okay, so this is another example of cohesion and adhesion property. Okay, in the morning, have you ever noticed that there are dews or water droplets that stick to the grass, to the tip of the leaves, and also pine needles? So these are examples of cohesion and adhesion of water. So that water droplets at the tip of the leaves is actually forming by cohesion, which means the water molecules stick to another water molecules that can form the water droplet. Okay, so this is actually by cohesion property. So when the water droplet stick to the leaves or stick to the tip of the grass, this is because adhesion property. Because when the water molecule stick to the surface of the grass, it is called as adhesion property. Okay, speak about cohesion. So cohesion, when water molecule stick to another water molecules due to hydrogen bond, resulting the higher surface tension, we call as surface tension, which is the cohesion of water molecules at the surface of a body of water. Thus, it will produce a strong layer as they pulled downward by the attraction of other water molecules beneath them. Okay, so look at next example of cohesion. Okay, for another example, when you put a paper clip on a glass of water, does the paper clip will float or sink in the water? Of course, it will float on top of the surface of water because it may cause that water surface will become strong enough to support that paper clip. Okay, so this is we call a surface tension. Surface tension is an effect within the surface layer of a water or liquid that causes the layer to behave as an elastic sheet. Okay, another example, this effect will allow insects. Have you ever heard about water strider? 
So this water strider may walk on water because of the surface tension of that water. It also allows small metal object, for example, paper clip just now, to float on the surface of water. And this surface tension also causes water to form a droplet of water. Okay, second property of water is it has high specific heat. So, basically, specific heat capacity defines as the amount of heat that must be absorbed or lost by one gram of a substance to change its temperature by one degree Celsius. Okay, so what is the meaning of high specific heat? It means water need a large amount of heat to raise its temperature okay so due to its high specific heat water heats up more slowly than almost any other compound and water can hold its temperature longer when heat is no longer applied Okay, now I want you all to imagine when you want to heat up a bowl of water and a metal. So, which one will heat faster? Of course, the metal will heat faster and the water will take a longer time to increase its temperature. This is because metal have low specific heat. And water has high specific heat because water need a large amount of heat to increase its temperature. Okay, next property is water expand as it freezes. What is meant by water expand? It is actually the water molecules expand as it freezes. Okay, so the question here, why ice, which is the solid state of water, is less dense than water or liquid state. So, of course, when you imagine a glass of water and a few uh, ice cubes, of course, that ice cube will float on top of the surface of water because that ice cube or the solid state of water is less dense than liquid state of water. So, how is this happened? Okay, look at this picture. When the water is in liquid state, of course, the molecules are unstable and irregularly formed by hydrogen bonds. Okay? But when the water freezed, so what happened to the molecules? The water molecules freeze in a hexagonal pattern. Hexagonal pattern here, the molecules are in six sides shape and create more spaces between each water molecule okay so therefore make them or the water molecules further apart then they will as liquid water okay so this is detailed answer when the question asks you why does ice float on water so of course look what happened in liquid state so the water molecules here are closely held together by weak hydrogen bond which mean when in liquid state, the water molecules are closely attracted to each other. So they are gliding freely and the molecules are held together. But when the water freezes, so the frozen liquid water will become ice state. Okay, on reaching the solid state, which is ice, hydrogen bonds become more stable arranging the water molecules far apart from each other so look at the picture okay in solid state the water molecules become more stable and becoming hexagonal pattern okay which means the spaces between each molecules are further apart and this is cause ice to have a less density than water Okay, making it float. Okay, next property of water is water has high heat of vaporization. Okay, first we look at the meaning of heat of vaporization. So heat of vaporization means energy required to convert one gram of liquid 
into gas at boiling point. This required energy will break down the intermolecular attractive force in water. Okay, so what is meant by water has high heat of vaporization? Okay, so because of hydrogen bonding, water will absorb large amount of heat as it vaporizes, and water also release large amount of heat as it condenses. Okay, the last water property stated here is when water is a versatile solvent. So here means almost all the substance can dissolve in water. This is due to the polarity of water molecules which have positive and negative charge. Okay, I think you have learned these terms. Okay, these three terms, solute, which is a substance that being dissolved by a solvent, for example, glucose and salt. Next term is solvent. So solvent here refer to the water, which is a substance that dissolves a solute. And of course, when there are mixture of those solute and solution, solvent, it will become a solution, which is a homogeneous mixture of dissolved substance. Okay, we move to the last topic about aqueous solutions. We have two subtopic, solvent, solute and solution. And the last one we learn about acid, base, pH scale, buffers and buffering mechanism. Okay, I will skip this slide because I have told you about the solute, solvent and solution. Okay, of course water is the solvent in any solution. Occasionally, a hydrogen atom shared by two water molecules shifts from one molecule to the other. Okay, so look at this picture. The water molecule that lost a proton or lost one hydrogen atom is now becoming a hydroxide ion with negative charge. So the water molecule with extra proton or extra one hydrogen ion will become hydronium ion H3O+. Okay, I want you all to read this by your own. You may skip or pause this slide to read the statement. Okay, now what is acid? So acid is actually a substance which donates hydrogen ion, H plus ions, to a solution. So we call it as acid. So an acid is a substance that increases the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution. So when hydrochloric acid, for example, is added to water, that hydrogen ions dissociate from chloride ions and will transfer to a solution. So addition of an acid makes a solution more acidic. Okay, next, what is base? So base is a substance which donates hydroxide ions OH negative ions to a solution we call as a base. Or in other term, base is a substance that reduces the hydrogen ion, H plus ion, concentration in a solution. Okay, so basically, solution with more hydroxide ion than hydrogen ions are basic solution. Okay, so basically you have learned this in your school. Okay, there are several types of acids and bases. We call a strong acid, weak acid, strong base, and weak base. Okay, next about pH. Of course, you have learned this during your school time. So pH is actually a potential of hydrogen. So pH basically it is a measurement of free hydrogen ion concentration. So what we want to highlight here is the concentration of hydrogen ion symbolized by using in bracket H plus. Okay, H refer to the hydrogen ion. Okay, so the sum of exponents of the free hydrogen and hydroxide ion must always 14. Okay, for example, uh, when you are given the hydroxide ion concentration, so you can easily calculate your hydrogen ion concentration and vice versa. For example, when you are given 1 
times 10 to the power of negative 3 mole of hydrogen ions. So you can find your hydroxide ion by, min by 14 minus 3. So you will get 1 times 10 to the power of negative 11 mole of hydroxide ion. Okay, you may pause this slide to read about pH of acid and base. I think this one you have learned in your school. Okay, I will explain about buffer. So this is the most important part here. Yeah? So what is buffer? So buffer is actually anything or any chemical that can resist changes of pH value of a solution. Okay, when hydrogen ion or hydroxide ion, basically we call as acid or base, is added to the solution. Okay, this means when any base or any acid is added to the solution. So what happened? This buffer helps to maintain cellular pH values at a constant level. Okay, I'll give you an example. Okay, if you have a glass of pure water, which is neutral water, and you add two spoonful of acid solution. Okay, so that pure water originally has pH 7 value. So when you add an acid solution to the glass of water, the pH will drop into pH 4, for example. Okay, because it will become acidic. But when we have buffer in that glass of water, it will help to maintain cellular pH values, which means it will not have a large gap between pH values. Okay, so for example, from this 7 pH value, this buffer helps to reduce only about 1 pH value. So the new pH value of the glass of water and that acidic solution will be only 6 pH value. Okay? Same goes to the base solution. When base are added to the pure glass of water, the buffer helps to maintain the pH value at a constant level. There is no much or huge uh, changes of the pH values. And you can also refer to one video about buffering mechanism that I have uploaded. Okay, so in these videos, it shows you how the buffer reacts to maintain the solution pH value. Okay, so in this slide, I will explain about one important buffer in our blood, which we call as carbonic acid. So please remember, carbonic acid is one common example of buffer in our blood system. Okay, so now look at the formula below part here. Okay, I'll give you one example. Okay, in one day, maybe you eat a lot of vegetables which is alkaline food. Okay, so our body will receive a lot of base solution or base concentration. So what happened? Next, we have the buffer we call as carbonic acid just now, which has formula H2CO3. So the green part here is actually the carbonic acid, which is our buffer. So what happens when you eat a lot of vegetables or alkaline food? Our buffer will dissociate into bicarbonate ion, HCO3- and hydrogen ion. Okay, so when you eat a lot of alkaline food, our buffer will dissociate and produce more hydrogen ion. Okay, do you get what I mean? So when we have the alkaline food absorbed in our body, so our buffer will release a lot of hydrogen ion to stabilize the pH. Okay, same goes the opposite way. In one day, maybe you ate a lot of oranges and 
um, citrus juice. So what happened? Our body or our blood has received a lot of acid solution or acid concentration. So what happened to respond to a drop in pH? So our buffer here that has been dissociated into bicarbonate ion and hydrogen. So the bicarbonate ion here will react to take or accept the excess hydrogen inside our blood. So what happened? It will maintain the pH of our blood to not becoming more acidic level. Okay, so you can refer to that video that I have had mentioned just now. That video will show you how the buffer reacts in solution. My name is James Lincoln. I'm a science teacher and I'm going to answer what is an important buffer solution in biology and why. Now, by far the most important buffer solution in biology is carbonic acid or carbonic acid and its conjugate base. See, in your blood is CO2 and H2O which combine to form carbonic acid, H2CO3. And that's the buffer that keeps the pH of your blood nearly constant. The blood needs a near constant pH of about 7.4 in order for the enzymes, the proteins, to function properly or else you will go into shock when your proteins fail. Here's how it works. The buffer is actually both parts of the equation at the same time. It's the acid and the conjugate base. When an acid is added to your bloodstream, for example, orange juice in the morning when you drink at breakfast time, then you're going to add acid to the bloodstream. But the conjugate base of the buffer solution is able to absorb that extra acid and keep the pH stable. On the other hand, if you add base to the solution, then the acid will take over and cancel out the base. It buffers changes in pH. I'm going to demonstrate that with this science equipment that I have here on the front table. I have some water which has CO2 added to it. You could call it soda water, but it's even simpler than that. It's just water with CO2 in it forming carbonic acid buffer solution. And I have some regular water and I have some orange juice. I take a measurement of the pH of the regular water and I see that it is about 8, a little bit less. And now I'm going to add some orange juice and stir it and I see the pH drops markedly down to about 6.6 .6. I'm now testing out the pH of the buffered solution of course it's acidic it has a pH of about 5.5 I'm gonna add orange juice to that solution and stir it and the buffered Solutions pH hardly changed at all. It's only 5.25. As you can see, the buffer has prevented large changes in pH. Buffers aren't just in the bloodstream. They're everywhere in nature, in the ocean, in the lake, in all the animals, always working to the same goal, homeostasis, keeping body systems stable. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something.